chapter 37. And King Zedekiah, the son of Josi Josiah, reigned instead of Kaniah, the son of Jehoiakim, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. So instead of, Nebuchadnezzar sets up a king, sets up a public kind of kingdom here. But neither he, this is Zechariah, nor his servants, nor the people of the land, did hearken unto the words of the Lord, which he spanked by the prophet Jeremiah. So Nebuchadnezzar's already come. He's going to come three times. And Zedekiah the king sent Jocko, the son of Shemlai the Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest, to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Pray now to the Lord our God for us. Do you think Jeremiah is not praying? When trouble comes, then oh, let's get into a prayer meeting. Now, you know, we're not going to be praying in heaven. Once we get the new Jerusalem, the new earth, the new heaven, there will be no prayer. Why would you need to pray? We're going to be forever praising God. We're not going to have any needs. Everything will be given to us that what our needs are. Now Jeremiah came in and went out among the people, for they had not put him into prison. Jeremiah ends up in prison a couple times in this, in this book. Then Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt. And when the Chaldeans that besieged Jerusalem heard these tidings of them, they departed from Jerusalem, right? So the army leaves. Here comes the Egyptians. They're thinking to help Israel. Well, you know what God has told Israel about the Egyptians. You're not to go back to Egypt. You're not to seek their help. You're not to get their women. You're not to get their horses. You're not to do anything of Egypt. And upon this then came the word of the Lord unto the prophet Jeremiah saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say to the king of Judah, all right, you go up to the king, go up to the ruler. I mean, Jeremiah has been pretty brave and God has been protecting him. The worst they've done to Jeremiah is put him in prison or slapped him. There have been prophets, don't you know, have been killed by kings according to Jesus, according to the scriptures. We have read about the blood in, in the city, and that's murder. That sent you unto me to acquire of me. And that was back in uh, verse 3. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt into their own land. They're going to do a retreat. And the Chaldeans shall come again and fight against the city and take it and burn it with fire. They're, the enemy is coming back. Woe unto you for going to Egypt for help, not me. So I'm going to have your help turn around and I'm going to have the enemy come. Thus saith the Lord, deceive not yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, and they shall not depart. And what you're going to do is you're going to look over the walls and hot, they're leaving. All right. And God says, Yeah, they're leaving. But they're coming back. You know, the Antichrist leaves the land for a while, then he comes back. King Saul leaves for a while, and then comes back. For though ye have smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that, fought, that fight against you, okay, yet there remains but wounded men among them. Nothing more, you know, they're wounded in action. Yet should they rise up every man in his tent and burn the city with fire. The, the wounded troops are going to come and kick your butt. And it came to pass that when the army of the Chaldeans had broken up from Jerusalem for the fear of Pharaoh's army, that's why they left. Now, Jeremiah is, is in prison. He is arrested in the gate and committed to dungeon of false charges. Here in chapter 37. He is released from, from the dungeon but restrained into the court of the prison by the end of this chapter. He is in prison in the miry dungeon 
dungeon of Mount Chaya, chapter 38. He's again released from the dungeon and kept in the prison court, Jeremiah 38, until the capture of the city. He's carried in chains from the city by Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard. He is finally released at Ramah, Jeremiah chapter 40. So Jeremiah leaves a prison life for the word of God. All right, so all this. And Jeremiah went forth of Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin. Jeremiah says, I'm out of here. I'm getting going. See ya. I have been prophesying. I believe God. It's time to save Jerusalem. Bye-bye. Remember the hope we read about in the last chapter? It's gone. It's totally gone. We read about, you know, God had hope. But, guess what? There is no hope. Later on, gotten worse. And when he was in the gate of Benjamin, no way, into the land of Benjamin to separate himself thence from the midst of the people. You guys are going to die. You're going to have famine. You're going to have sword. I'm out of here. I ain't standing around for the pestilence. I ain't. Listen, when the prophet gets out of town, And he was in the gate of Benjamin, which is a city. A captain of the ward, the guys in charge, was there, whose name was Arja, and the, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Hananiah. And he took Jeremiah the prophet, saying, Thou falls away to the Chaldean. That's a false accusation. Going to Benjamin, he's then said Jeremiah, It is false. I fall not away to the Chaldean. But he hearkened not to him, so that Arijah, or Arijah took Jeremiah and brought him in, brought him to the princes. Either they don't want Jeremiah to go, or God didn't want Jeremiah to go. Jeremiah wanted to go. Wherefore the princes were wroth with Jeremiah and smote him for a lie that this guy said. Exactly what they did to Jesus. Man, they called for false witnesses and they had a line around the building. And put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe, for they had made that the prison. Now, why they made his house to prison, I don't know. But when Jeremiah was entered into the dungeon and into the cabin, and Jeremiah had remained there many days. Now he's a prison, it's a dungeon. The dungeon is different from a prison. And Zedekiah the king sent and took him out. And the king asked him secretly in his house. He brings the prophet Jeremiah into the king's house. Don't let anyone see you. Is there any word from the Lord? And Jeremiah said, There is. For he said, Thou shalt be delivered in the hand of the king of Babylon. Can you just imagine Jeremiah's attitude? Yeah, you're going to Babylon. This is probably the voice, you know what? I've had it. I'm done. There's no good news, King. I, I was just put in prison. I was just trying to get out of town, get out of Dodge. I'm not trying to cause any problems. Yeah, I got word from the Lord. You're going to Babylon. Moral Jeremiah said unto the king Zedekiah, What have I offended against you? Now, can you imagine his voice picking up? Or against thy servants, or against this people, that ye have put me into prison. He's angry. He's in prison because of false charges. Like Joseph was amongst his brethren. You know who put Jesus in jail that night before he was turned over to Roman government, don't you? His brethren, like Joseph, like Jeremiah. You know, you had the you had the monkey midnight court, night court. 
But where did they keep them till they brought them to the uh, pilot in the morning? Probably kept them in a prison. Is that one of the prophecies? More Jeremiah said unto the king Zedekiah, What have I offended against thee, or against thy servants, or against this people, that ye, all of you, charging the king? The king has power to say, hey, listen, let that guy out of jail. He didn't do anything wrong. When we talked about the burning of the scroll, the king didn't burn it, but he was charged with. These kings are neglecting, as you read the scriptures, well, you know, call for justice and, and, and equity and, and truth and righteousness. What, where is that example in the Bible? Here it is. Jeremiah is not getting no justice. He's not getting no rights. He's not getting nothing. He has been falsely accused and put into jail. And that angers God. How many other people are put into these jails just because somebody said something? Again, there is blood in the streets of Jerusalem. They're killing people. Where are now your prophets which prophesy unto you, saying, The king of Babylon shall not come against you, nor against this land? Where are they? I'm the only right prophet. Where are all your prophets? Probably dead, gone to captivity, hiding, ashamed. Therefore here now I pray thee, O my lord the king, still treats the king respect, unlike Christians today with the president. And yet these Christians that make fun of the president have not been put into jail. They have not been smoked. They have not been lied about. Yet, but they speak wicked of the President of the United States, according to Romans 11, set in there by God. Well, Satan, Luke chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4. Yeah, but Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, God had to allow Satan to do it. Satan needs to get permission. And if God doesn't want a, a person or a specific person to be in an office somewhere in this world, and Satan does, God says, nope, you can't do it. And Satan has to say, nope, you can't do it. And even if he is put in office by Satan, two men in the Bible, well-known, famous, where they're about to people, quote, and, and know and love as Paul and Peter have said, respect the government, respect the powers that will be, and you Christians need to study Nero as comparing Obama to Adolf Hitler. You need to know what Nero did to Christians. As Adolf Hitler had done to God's people, the Jews. But we have an illustration of how we're supposed to treat the government by men who are under a vile government. What vile government could Jeremiah be under? They're completely away from God, 100%. God says, I'm turning my face on you. I'm not going to help you. Matter of fact, I'm going to join the enemy. You know what you'd call that if it was wartime? You would call God a traitor, a Benedict Arnold. Benedict Arnold does not have a good name. Yeah, but God says, because of your sins, the evil I'm going to bring upon you, I will be working with the enemy to go against you. That king is wicked. We read, it said here, I mean, it says, But he, nor his servants, nor the people of the land, did hearken unto the words of the Lord, which he spake by the prophet Jeremiah. They didn't listen to God at all. And Jeremiah says to the king, O oh, my Lord, the King, let my supplication, I pray thee, very kind, very respectful, may the voice may be a little hard, be accepted before thee, that thou cause me not to return to the house of Jonathan the scribe, lest I die there. That's the dungeon, that's the prison. He didn't say, get me a lawyer. I've got rights. 
Oh, can I just respect me? I mean, if you're going to send me somewhere, don't send me back there. Then Zedekiah the king commanded that they should commit Jeremiah to the court of the prison, another prison, and that they should give him a daily a piece of bread out of the baker's tree. Until all the bread in the city were spent. We're getting down to it. We're getting down to very low funds. Very low food. Thus Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison until Babylon came. This will be the second time that Nebuchadnezzar has left. And he's coming back a third time. And that will be the final doom. Do you know why Jeremiah is in jail? Why did God put me in this situation? <laughs> Jeremiah is protected. He's giving food. The city's in a besiege. He's also protected from the Babylonian army from the Chaldeans when they come in the land killing everybody. Jeremiah won't be killed. He's in jail. Do you think the army's going to, you know, uh, let's everyone, okay, we're we'll soon be breaking the city. Let's head to the jails and kill, no. Let's head to the king's house. Jeremiah's been in the king's house. Let's go to the temple. Jeremiah's been in the temple. Let's go to the scribe. Jeremiah's been with the scribe. Wherever these armies going to go to kill people and take hostages and take captives is the places that Jeremiah has. And God says, I'm going to put you in jail for a little while just to protect you. And when the doors are open, wait till you see who opens those doors of freedom from you. And it ain't going to be your own kindred. Wait till we get that part in the chapter where, when Jeremiah is set free by a Gentile. That's a very interesting subject there. And what happens to Jeremiah? Right now, prison is protection for Jeremiah. And the king is ordered to give him bread. Then order him to give him steak. Give him bread. He's not in the vilest of prisons. He's been called out of that. But he's in prison for protection. While the whole city just goes, goes to destruction. I warn you. Sometimes God will put you somewhere where you don't want to be. To play. Jeremiah was leaving the land. You know why Jeremiah was leaving the land? Because he knew it's it. It's done. It's gone for. But God says, no, you stay, in, you stay in Jerusalem for a while. And when you stay in Jerusalem, I'll protect you. And that's exactly what happens. Sometimes where you want to be in the city of Benjamin is not where God wants you to be. And sometimes the situation that you are put in by God, prison, is for your own protection. And you wait to see the results that God, Jeremiah has no idea what's going to happen now. We're not told that he was told that, you know, he's going to be alive. You ever wonder if he thought with his sword, pestilence, and uh, uh, famine, you ever think Jeremiah thought he was going to die there? Maybe he's getting out of Dodge because <laughs> I'll spare my life. God will bless me if I go somewhere else. But we see another king. We see another leadership. We see another government. Another king. Another president. Another... It's too wicked. For all sin comes short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. The only king that's going to be set upon this world, upon the governments, upon the throne, that will do right will be the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone. So instead of, oh, here I go. Instead of voting, ooh, why don't you just get out there and witness like God told you to do? Get out there and learn the Bible. And those that get saved, train them up from newborn babes into, into elder and aged Christians that they can do the same. And you just go tell people about Jesus Christ. Never mind the voting booth. Never mind politics. You just put your hands to the. Hey, you never seen Jeremiah once. Only thing time he walked in. For the kings and the princes and all that. To tell thus saith the Lord. See you later. You don't want to stay for the party? No, I don't want to stay for the party. 
You don't want to sit and chat at the king's table for No, I don't want to sit at the king's table. The Lord has nothing else for me to say. If the Lord gives me something else to say, then I'll show up in your palace. Then I'll show up in the temple. Then I'll show up where God tells me to do. But unless God has a word for me to you, I'm going by. Jeremiah does not get wrapped up in anything with politics. He tells him, thus saith the Lord. He doesn't force them. He probably prays for them. And they go one way, and Jeremiah goes God's way. Wait till you see what happens to Jeremiah at the end of the book. Wait till you see what happens to them when they get to the end of the book. Vast difference. 